The reign of Razor is upon us. His journey towards breakdancing in Sydney in 2027 has begun because Scott Robertson has named his first squad as New Zealand head coach and the squad for those games against England, which look like being blockbuster test matches in just a couple of weeks' time, ones I will be covering on the channel. So hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and tell me your thoughts in the comments. What do you make of Razor's squad? Who are you surprised to see not there? Because there are some omissions, I think, which have raised a few eyebrows. And how excited are you? by that there are four new faces there are five uncapped players so it's largely the squad which got to a world cup final and within one point of south africa in that world cup final despite being a man down for much of it so uh, i guess it, this is this is kind of tinkering under the bonnet it's not it's not buying a whole new car and there's no need to because new zealand have got outstanding players i guess the more interesting conversation is what does this tell you about how Scott Robertson is going to set up his New Zealand team. Are there is there anything from these selections which tells us how they're going to be different? Because they are going to be different, but it's not going to be th from personnel specifically. I think it's going to be how they're set up, where they're unleashed, where they're reined in a little bit, and and um, in exactly how they play. And I I do think it's an exciting time for New Zealand fans at the minute because there is that level of unknown, and all we have is Razor's track record, which has been outstanding. As a, as a coach at <laughs> club level, we're going to see about the transition to the international stage. He has selected a captain and it has gone as expected to Scotty Birrett. Proud moment for him. I quite like a lock being a, a captain. They're in a good position to have chats with the referee. The other contenders, well, the main one, Ardi Savia, who's one of the vice captains, along with Geordie Barrett as well. For what it's worth, I, I, in previous videos, I've sort of said I would go for Ardi Savia, but I can actually understand the merit of him not being captain because he can just concentrate on being the most amazing rugby player and arguably the best in the world, um, along with Antoine Dupont and a couple of others. So I'm, I'm all right with Ardi Savia not being skipper, and it's he's still got the leadership within the group. And it'll be interesting to see whether... The responsibility of captaincy just reigns Scott Barrett in on those moments where he has a brain fart and sees red mist or does something stupid. You don't want to lose that edge from his game because it's what makes him an outstanding international rugby player. But will the respons responsibility of being the captain just rein that in enough that he stays on the pitch for the full 80 minutes, which they're going to need to, especially as I'll come to, I'll go through the, the squad position by position. They've only got three locks in the squad. So absolutely, they need every minute out of Scott Barrett. As for the squad itself, uh, I'll go through position by position, starting with the props, which is an area of strength. And I have to say, when I'm thinking of, with my England fan hat on and looking ahead a couple of weeks, this is an area where New Zealand have absolutely got an edge on England, who, who at prop have not found the next generation of props yet. Then the, the, They're still picking 37-year-old Dan Cole, who I thought back in 2019, uh, after the World Cup final, that might have been his last game. But he popped up in the World Cup, World Cup semi-final eight months ago and he's still in the England squad now and he's travelling to New Zealand. Um, that is nothing against Dan Cole. It just means England do not have the depth or quality at prop. New Zealand absolutely do. De Groot and Lomax have proven themselves to be world-class operators and with guys like Tamaiti Williams, Tonga Fassi, uh, Fletcher Newell, got some outstanding props backing them up. And now, Pasilio Tosi, who is the new face in the front row, 25 years of age, with the Canes. He's been backing up Terrell Lomax this season. He's only started six matches in Super Rugby. So there may be other props you're thinking, well, they probably deserve a shot ahead of Tosi. But, and here's the crucial stats for me, six foot five and 145 kgs. There are not many human beings that size. And that is some raw materials that would excite me if I was a head coach and you can absolutely work with. So get him into camp, let the coaches have a look, see what they can See if they can buff up that diamond and you could have an absolutely enormous front row in the years ahead. When you look at him and Tamaiti Williams could be the props in a few years. Wow, that is pretty frightening. So definitely an area of strength for New Zealand. When you move to the hooker, one new face there as well, George Bell, 22 years of age. He's been, well, because uh, Cody Taylor was at the World Cup, he started the first half of Super Rugby. He's been on the bench for the second half of Super Rugby. And if I were Ricky Riccitelli, I would be pretty upset by this selection, feeling that it was my time and it was my turn. I think this is purely a selection. Tell me if you disagree, based on age profile, the fact that George Bell is 22 and Riccitelli is 29. Still no age. And absolutely, that would mean, what, 33 at most by the next World Cup, which is 
well, that's no worries. That's that's the age of Cody Taylor. So what's what's the problem there? So I would feel a bit hard done by if I was him. As I go through, I'll mention the emissions. If there's anyone else I have, don't mention because um, you know I I don't watch as much Super Rugby as I watch Premiership in England or URC, and uh, for obvious reasons, time of day that matches are on and stuff. So do let me know. Uh, as I move on to Lock, where, as I mentioned, there are only three. The captain, Scott Barrett, along with Pitruck, Tua Palotto and Tupu Vai. All good players. And there you go. They're all going to be in the match day 23, aren't they? Who's the next cab off the rank? And is there some? would you have preferred another body there? Or is there a back row player who could maybe slot in as a, a utility lock? And is that what Razor is thinking? Interesting one there. It's not uncommon for there to be three second rows in a squad to be honest uh, as for uh, the back row or sorry I'm, I'm using the New Zealand vernacular the Lucy's um, you've got Blackadder Finau they look like the sixes Papali seven and then you've got kind of utility back row in Jacobson Savia and Wallace Satiti the new face I, ex I mean we expected to see new faces in the back row didn't we I was thinking Peter Lackey might get a shot I was think I was certainly expecting to see Hoskins Satutu, so it is. It's definitely not the case that Razor's just spelt it wrong. Just like Brett, oh uh, Satutu, Satiti, he was tired. It was late at night, and he wrote the wrong name. Definitely not that, is it? Just based purely on what I have seen of Super Rugby this season, how has Hoskins Satutu not been selected? That's a head scratcher. I mean, for one thing, it tells me that Ardi Savia is going to be the number eight, and he's not going to shift to seven. Wallace Satiti, 21 years of age, debut season in Super Rugby, 13 games at that level and just nine starts. It would be unthinkable, I would suggest, that he's going to play against England with the players you've also got in that back row. So has Razor just brought him along to have a look at him, to give him a bit of experience? I mean... Maybe maybe that's what he's thinking. He knows the five back rows that he's going to have in his match day 23 for the England test. He's quite confident in those and it's going to be all of those other five guys or at four or five. Um, and he's just thought, well, let's, let's, get a, let's get a young kid in and have a look. I'm quite excited about him. I thought that young kid might have been Peter Lackey. But definitely surprised not to see Satutu. Is there anything about, like, I don't know, is he, a, I know New Zealand have the no dickheads rule. Is, is Hoskins Satutu a dickhead? <laughs> It would be news to me if he was. I, d I don't know. And I'm not making that accusation for the record. I'm just trying to work out why why he's not been picked. And I mean, even if you wanted Walter Satiti in, Wallace Satiti, sorry, in um, your squad anyway, I, I might have gone for Satutu over Blackadder, for example. Just saying. So I, I'm, I'm looking at the pack overall and thinking, what does this, what does this tell me? I think he's gone for big boys that can that can smash when i look at the props and i look at some of the selections in the back row blackadder that's his that's his superpower is just smashing people so he's going for big physicality and maybe big physicality is the is the the watchword in the pack creativity is the watchword in the backs let's have a look at the selections there at scrum off um obviously no roy guard but christy retima and Perinara, really pleased for TJ Perinara. That's that's just a cool story, and he is he is absolutely class. As for Ratima, very excited about him. Twenty three years of age, his record with the Chiefs. He's made nineteen starts in Super Rugby, sixteen tries. Just has that knack of popping up on the on the shoulder, running that support line that that guys like Dupont and Aaron Smith run so well. So I kind of see what what Razor sees in him. Um, there you go, there's Scrum Half. As for, uh, see, I, I couldn't label it as Fly Half. I had to say Fly Half slash 15. And this is why I say that the, the New Zealand backline says to me creativity. The forwards say size, physicality, a bit of nasty edge. The backs say creativity because I don't know what pieces Razor is going to put where. Until he names his first 23, I haven't got a clue. Which one of those is going to be 10? Which one of those is going to be 15 out of DMAC and uh, and Bodhi? Uh, the, all, all, both of them and Stephen Perifetta can play 10. They can play 15. I don't know the way it's going to go. You tell me. Uh, as for centre, 
you've got Billy Proctor along with the three that are that are there. Billy Proctor outside centre with the Canes. That says to me, Lynette Brown is the backup 12 for Geordie Barrett and Proctor, the backup 13. Although Lynette Brown, obviously, in a matchday squad, invaluable because he can play in both positions. But that, this kind of a quite a solid selection, actually. Not too controversial. This one, Billy Proctor, real solid performer. Six foot two, 100 kgs. He's got that physical size that Barrett and Yuani both have, and Lynette Brown for that matter. That's a big physical midfield four. And Billy Proctor, promising player coming through, age 25. So interesting to see. And wingers. And I've said wingers rather than outside backs. It could be that that one of them ends up at fullback at some point, perhaps. Narawa, maybe. Who knows? But they're, I think they're largely the wingers. Talia, Caleb Clark. Ironi Narawa and Sevu Reese, wheels, wheels, wheels. Um, yeah, that's frightening. But then, of course, just returning to, in terms of outside backs, who knows? I quite like that I haven't got a clue what the what the first 15 is. I think I could probably guess 21 or 22 out of the 23 names, but putting them next to a particular position, uh, I don't know. I'm assuming Ardi Savi is going to be the number eight. I'm assuming... D Mac and Bodie Barrett are both going to be 110, 115, but we just don't know. And that's the beauty of Razor's squad. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Um, who are you surprised not to see? I'm thinking Satoto mainly. I'm thinking Riccatelli. Maybe Ruben Love uh, and Peter Lakai, uh, as I mentioned. But um, on the whole, I'm very respectful of that New Zealand squad. And I think just based on what I've seen, I think they will and should start favourites to win those two test matches against England. But it's going to be a belter, isn't it? I'll be covering it on the channel, so hit subscribe. See you on the next one.